hundreds of protesters poured into the capital this week, greeted by jubilant crowds after three days of travel by bus from Darfur. This is a feeling that we all Sudanese have been dreaming about, uh, to become uh, as one nation, to have all our uh, brothers uh, in nation from uh, Darfur and from other uh, parts of country. <laughs> After years of being targeted for their ethnicity, it's important for Darfurians to be a part of the movement. We must unite to overthrow the system together, the corrupt system that caused the death and homelessness of people in Darfur and elsewhere. For now, the new arrivals are making do, sleeping in tents at the sit-in site. They're determined to have their voices heard and to work toward the full dismantling of the former regime. These are our brothers, who came from the territory of Darfur. We did what we could do. We came here with a purpose, to overthrow the system. After that, we can celebrate and go back. If the system isn't completely gone, there's no going back. We'll stay, we'll observe Ramadan here. They wake up to the sounds of the revolution and prepare to join thousands of others in the streets. But Darfurians here say they're not only seeking total regime change, but also justice for crimes committed by Omar al-Bashir. Some of the Sudanese wants to judge Bashir here. They want to hang him or they want to execute his head. That's what I want to do. But what I think, what I think it should be right to be done, the International Criminal Court should have to take its statements forward. The military government said they won't extradite al-Bashir to The Hague, but together with the voices of Darfurians, calls are growing for the ex-dictator to face international justice.